Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody had a good holiday weekend. I was telling the chat room today that uh, probably I can only remember, I think, maybe once in my whole lifetime growing up in Pittsburgh where it was green on Christmas Eve and we woke up to a snowy Christmas. Now Pittsburgh doesn't get a whole lot of snow. So probably less than 20% of the time you'd probably have a, a white Christmas. But this year was green on Thursday and then Friday morning when we got up four to six inches of snow on the ground, which would have been great if there had been kids here to enjoy it. And the Steelers done, yes, wasn't that a whale of a game? I had just about given up on them, but now I'm back to thinking they're going to take the Super Bowl. So, All right, usually the uh, week before New Year's, between Christmas and New Year's, is relatively quiet. And, uh, but this year, we've got a, obviously a different dynamic with everybody sitting home, not going anywhere. Um, everybody's still sitting at their desk trading. So as we see, saw today with the, I guess, the signing of the, the latest stimulus bill, which I am heard that there's so much pork in that thing that uh, still kicking the can down the road. But the markets like it. Dow up 200 points. Now, 200 points being from the old uh, old trading where. Back when I started being a stockbroker in 1976, if the Dow moved up 10 points, that was a huge day. That's when the Dow was at 750 to 1,000. At 30,000, 200 points is just kind of a, a moderate day. But as you can see, we're pushing the top of this resistance level for this uh, congestion area. Uh, but if it breaks through, there's a good possibility we could be looking at another wave like this, like this, and then the next step up. So the other uh, obvious uptrending factor is the NASDAQ, continuing to trade up uh, above the uh, the T-line, nice steady uptrend. Uh, Jay, that could be, well be. That could well be. So there's, there's nothing that you can't uh, imagine might happen in these markets. I always refer to the story back when for eight years the Dow went from 750 to 1,000 back to 750 to 1,000, did that for eight years, and some idiot was saying the market could hit 3,500. And we kept thinking, what's this guy smoking? And that was years ago. So market's still in an uptrend. Still making some good uh, trade setups. Now, we recommended this one. I... GMS, because of this rounding bottom, uh, buy signals back up above the T-line, this could have another pop to it.
Yeah, in the year uh, in 2000, I was one of the first groups to be SOS trading, which was the electronic trading online. And uh, I can remember, I can remember the day that the Dow hit a thousand or hit ten thousand. Big celebrations. Yep. Well, I wasn't so much a so spread as I was. Uh, uh, I was showing a lot of people in the room that I was in how to use uh, candlesticks uh, to trade. But it was it was interesting. I know there was days. I guess there was about sixty people in the room in the big office area that we had, and I know on one day that that room did 10% of all the volume that was on, uh, that traded on the NASDAQ that day. It's basically because these were kids that they were 23, 25, 28 years old, and they would do two, three, 400 trades a day. Just in and out, in and out. So anyways, uh, we also recommended Heckler, which started out nice, but backed off. So here's a perfect example that if I had been buying here with the expectation this was a J-hook pattern breakout, that my stop would have been right here. Because logic says if they come back down through the open, the bulls are not in control. The bears are in control. Close out the trade. And VVPR was another example that it should open positive and trade positive, but opened, waffled, and then immediately traded off. So that would have kept us out of that trade. So the, uh, oh, so that's uh, a topic that I need to bring up. Um, usually things are slow between New Year's or Christmas and New Year's. So we'll have tomorrow night and Wednesday night to do topics. So whatever topics you would like to uh, uh, do, whether it's entry and exit or profit taking or uh, stop loss, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll schedule one of those or one on each night. We can do scans. Yep. Uh, so anyways, uh, so what we've got to look for is things that might be turning around. Now Fossil, after breaking out, has backed off. Uh, yeah, they'll all be at 8 o'clock. All right, access strategies and long-term trades. All right, I'm writing all these down. So, but you want to use your basic... Uh, trend indicator, which is as long as you're above the T-line, you stay long. Blink, kind of the same scenario. Some toppiness, but not a reversal signal. Notice where it closed today, right smack dab on the, uh, right smack dab on the uh, 3T-line. Uh, Joseph, we don't need to do that anymore in here. We can just Google how to do that. Uh, Jay, Matt, too bad you have to you have to go to a high pressure hose company to get that done. Stop loss. Okay, I'll 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 combine some of these. Uh, oh, so here's the one that we were playing with because of the big breakout move. Um, this one still has the uh, prospects of moving up big because... Well, Shazam, how come I can't make this? Maybe I need to just go to a weekly. 
Uh, let's see. Did that. I'm going to go to a monthly. Oh, what's up? I think even if you go back, oh, that is. I thought on one chart it showed that it was up in the 200s at one time. So anyways, a lot of these small stocks breaking out, uh, that's a monthly chart. That's your weekly chart, and that's your daily chart. Uh, I think we will have a session this Thursday. I think the market is open on Friday, right? When is the first? The first is on Friday. No, it's not open on Friday? Okay. Maybe you, you don't celebrate the first until late that night. Or is it? Oh, it's Thursday late that night. No. Okay. I guess it is closed Friday. All right. So that's what makes this. All right. I'm looking at my calendar on. All right. Let's get on to things that are still moving in the right direction. GameStop, as you can see, is still moving up in this 45 degree. Uh, held on to AB or AQB because it stayed above the T-line. However, it's a little bit iffy here. So this one has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, that's that much more evidence that this is not going through right now move to someplace else. And a few of them have pulled back. Uh, WWR still probably in an uptrend, but it has to stay above the T-line. And CBAT, the same scenario. Well, 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 well. Has to open positive tomorrow and trade positive. Uh, weekly auctions, I am glad you told me that, or I would have just kind of waffled right through. Ooh, I'll have to see which ones I have expiring on that day. Lithium, another one, a little bit weak, but still above the T-line. So a lot of times, uh, or the T-line helps me keep from getting anxiously whipsawed in and out. Uh, Joe, I'm giving it one more day on CBAC. And MGNI have a safety stop now at today's low. It closed basically right at the T-line. So I'll be looking at this one tomorrow to say it has to open positive and trade positive. If it doesn't, it's coming back into this area, and that means it's probably going to be a few more days or weeks before it gets moving again. So there's better places right now to, to put your money. SLL is another one that's using the T-line to stay stay in it. And VLDR, this one was, was closed out today because it told us when they broke this out, there was not any more buying. And the uh, again, the, uh, the uh, close below the T-line is just a probability factor that if it closed there, we don't have any good buyers or good strength. And right there looks like it could have closed about the halfway point of this candle. Uh, so you want to, the, the probabilities have gone against you. Uh, that is just slightly in that, uh, that category of uh, three, three black uh, crows. 
Oswald, hold on to your individual ones until I get through, or then we'll get to all of them. Now, the ones that are working are obviously the ones that are still in these nice patterns, like uh, GP today, ups. It was up 27% or something. So that's what we're going to be kind of looking at. Let's first go to some of the biggies. Apple's still moving in the right direction. And Amazon broke out today. Let's get rid of these. So now it's a little bit more compelling, the fact that it kind of broke through this level right here. So look for a 45 degree uh, from this area. NVIDIA, there's nothing there, just sagging. So not long NVIDIA and didn't go short NVIDIA either, uh, mainly because if the market is in an uptrend, you really want to have some compelling sell signals uh, to be short. And Netflix, that one's just having troubles going anywhere. It had a little breakout here, but when it closed back below the T-line, it was time to close it out. Just nothing there to, to give you a probability factor that's going to be in your favor for making money. Tesla, all you can do is stay long on this one right now. Okay, and the ones that were looking good, let's see, these, this one started out nicely today, trying to do a J-hook. Uh, this is CCJ. I'd still be a buyer of this if it comes back up through this level. I'm telling you the J-hook pattern is working. Some of these were pointed out in the uh, chat room, which, again, is a good supply or a good source of good trades because it's got everybody watching for the same type of pattern setups. Look at the little trend kicker type signal on TRIP. So TRIP's got a good uh, chart to it. Uh, got a few more fry pan bottoms. Let me get to those in a minute. Here's your uh, bullish doji sandwich breakout on EAF. That one is a, a, a good chart to buy on positive trading. And guilt, kicker signal. Kicker signal, bobble breakout. This one you can definitely be buying on positive trading. Anticipating wave one, wave two, kicker signal starting a bobble breakout going into wave three. Uh, yeah, I've got that one on here in a minute. That's another kicker signal. I'll get down to B, T, B, T. Here's another good-looking chart. And the reason they're good-looking is lots of indecision, support at the 34. Now your best friend gap up through the T-line. That's just, again, putting probabilities in your favor that... Uh, that it's going to be moving in the, in the right direction. Let's see. Each market will close at 1 p.m. Thursday and also 1 p.m. on uh, Closed all day Friday. Okay. Does it close early on Thursday? Uh, so DXC, another one that's breaking the downtrend with a little trend kicker type signal. That's not good. And then BTBT, we saw that early. So... Here's the question. Do we buy here? Do we buy here? Buy here? Anytime I see something that's moving big, flip over to your 10-minute chart. 
may not be buying here but would be buying here may not be buying here but would be buying up here That's on Thursday, so it closes at 4 o'clock normal, but bonds close at 2 o'clock. All right, thank you. So anytime you see something that's moving and you want to decide to get in, go to your 10-minute chart. Let's see, did the crave? Uh, well, that was at the close, so that doesn't really mean anything. So if you saw a gap up, it was up pretty big, you thought, yep, I shouldn't be buying right now. Well, wait a minute, it's holding the T-line, maybe I can be buying here. Wouldn't be buying in here. So still use the 10-minute uh, the, the T-line to make, uh, make those decisions. Here's another one. Now is this another one? What do I chart? I've got the minute, the minute chart. That's why. Now oh, a little kicker signal. There was something. Maybe I typed in the wrong symbol. Uh, or maybe it was because of the kicker signal. Uh, Ron, if, that, if that's what you're trading that day, yes, you can do that. What were we looking at? BTBT. So if I'm looking at this and it's moving in the right direction, and I've already got a 10, 15, 20, 40, 60, 100, 120% profit, I'm going to say, up. Uh, I'm going to see what it does here, what it does here. Maybe I'm closing out here or closing out here. Uh, yes, nothing to do with tomorrow's trading. Because remember what the candlestick signals are. They're the graphic depiction of investor sentiment at that time. Now, tomorrow is going to be a completely different story. Because a lot more people are going to have read why this popped so much. Uh, uh, people are going to make their decisions on whether they're going to be buying or selling. Having nothing to do with this. More having to do with what happened here or why it moved here on that day. Uh, so, kicker type signal. Which also is why you want to use your trend kicker type signal which you've got right here and that was the same scenario over here on GP kind of a trend kicker signal that was further confirming a uh, uh, your fry pan bottom pattern so adding two plus two together I don't know what happened there did I type the right Symbol. I think I did, and it's not coming up. Okay. So much for that best friend. So here's the two plus two. Kind of a morning star signal, smack dab off the 50 in the oversold area. Now a doji sandwich. But the doji sandwich with a best friend gap up through the resistance level. What can we assume from this? Wave three is going to be the same as wave one. So that becomes a good viable option trade or even a stock trade. Uh, yeah, GP, you just stay long. You might see a little bit of consolidation. But you still have this fry pan bottom uh, set up. This is why I'm constantly looking 
for the fry pan bottom setups because you know not only are the probabilities that they're going to go in the direction you want them to, but the magnitude of the move is going to be much stronger than just a uh, just an uptrending stock. As we can see what happened here in BWEN, fry pan bottom, breakout, huge price move. What about ADS? That's also a little kicker type signal. Wave three uh, in, in, in progress. Can you explain a trend kicker? A kicker signal is when they reverse it at the bottom of a trend. Notice how it opened here, closed here, opened at the previous day's open and went the opposite direction. A trend, and you had another kicker signal over here. A trend kicker signal is you already have the trend in progress, then you have a down day, and the next day they gap it at the previous day's open and goes the opposite direction. So that trend kicker still illustrates a lot of strength. It just happens to be already in the trend. And beam, what was I, oh, fry pan bottom. This is the type of thing we're looking for. Now, when do you get ready to sell? And this is the, uh, the aspects of uh, human nature that the Japanese rice traders kind of illustrate for us. They gap this up in the overbought area, have a big price move away from the T-line. Now you start looking for sell signals. My safety stop would be right here. If it opened positive and started trading positive, it would be at the open of the next day because look how far away you'd be from the T-line. That's B-E-E-M. And Macy's also doing kind of a J-hook fry pan bottom. Dillard's, another fry pan bottom, and observe the obvious. Kind of a trend breakout. Are the trend left-right combos, best friend signals, doji sandwiches, are they reliable? as if they occurred as if they occurred at reversal points uh, HP yes that's exactly why we're teaching them in here because a left right combo is very probable uh, prob probable kicker signals are very probable uh, where was the other? Oh, the best friend one didn't come up today. So, yes, that's why we're going to have another training session that is, we've had training sessions, and here's kind of the, uh, the stepstone of knowing what the signals and patterns and the high probability trade setups, I guess the evolution. First of all, you want to know the 12 major signals. So we do that in a two-day training, the 12 major signals and the, uh, the uh, high-profit candlestick patterns. Those are reliable in the sense that the Japanese race traders have spent 400 years of analyzing and observing what happens in human nature and the signal, signals that they uh, create when a reversal occurs. So that's your first step. That's your ABCs of uh, candlesticks. The next batch is taking the, oh, uh, uh, those 12 major signals and patterns and combining them to give us what we call the top rank signals and patterns. Like your best friend, a doji gap up or your left right combo or the strongest ones, like a kicker signal, which has the gap built into it. 
So we've got 18 of those, I think, 15 or so. And we uh, quantify them, with the best friend being the top one. But it's not because the best friend is good and number 15 is not good. They're all good. Just trying to put them in, into a, uh, a quantitative uh, list of which ones are better than the others. But they all work. And then we're going into the next stage, which I'm working on right now, which is taking those signals and patterns, top rank signals and patterns, and the other indicators that would add more credibility to, um, to where, where they occurred and when and in what market conditions. That's not the one I was looking for. Uh, there was one, well, let's see, well, target, there was one that I had not too long ago that I just did, I thought, where the uh, bullish signal was coming off of the 50-day uh, moving average, I forget, so we're going into the next, uh, next step. I don't think we did TSEM, but that's still a good factor. That's a good uh, that's a good chart. But darn, which one was it? Was it Yelp? Yes, right off the 50-day moving average. So this is taking the uh, uh, you know. All, all the elements, I mean, we could, uh, we could see four or five different positive elements right here. Oversold condition, morning star signal, off the 50, a doji at the T-line, gap up through that, breaking this downtrend. You add all that together, and you've got a, a good, strong, uh, you know, thingy. Uh, So that one's a nice fry pan bottom, uh, RK. I think I had that in the, yes, that was in, oh, that was a trend kicker illustration. So the more pieces of evidence that you can put, and that's, some people ask, why do you have the 34 on here? Because the 34 works reasonably well for some reason, just like the T-line works extremely well for some reason, which we've kind of identified those as being natural support and resistance levels of, of human nature. So if we know what a pattern setup looks like, but we have a fry pan bottom that goes into a J-hook pattern, that's your classic pattern. That gives us a lot more evidence over here. Look at that little trend kicker signal and then a breakout. That told us as long as we stay up above the T-line, we've got this classic pattern in progress. This is why you're seeing a lot more of the recommendations, not just a doji bullish confirmation, but we want to refine it to be a doji gap up best friend or a, a pattern, things that are going to improve the probabilities of being in the right place at the right time. So. The always the rhetorical question is, do we always get big price moves like this out of our patterns? The answer is definitely not, but the probabilities of being in something like this are much greatly enhanced by being in a pattern. So I look for things where the probabilities could start, where you can recognize, uh, uh, Chris, hold on to your individual ones until we do the double line. But we know what this one is setting up for. It's setting up for the message. The message being a big move to the upside, profit taking, and then the profit taking over. I'm, this one is SIF. So why do we call this a message? Even though it doesn't look good, the message was they came into this one with great force.
So look at your left right combo, breakout, big price move. So this is why we're always in in the uh, uh, scanning process of finding the best trade setups. You can almost see, let's see, I'm going to take this line off. You can almost see what everybody else might have been watching, this little resistance level. So if we can see a pattern setting up or a buy signal setting up a pattern, there's our slow curve. There's the breakout. This is why I've constantly uh, recommended learn one or two patterns. Look at our little scoop type pattern. So we got the classic fry pan bottom, J hook, scoop type pattern. These are the type of things that we try to get into is just setting up these uh, or looking for the, the pattern setups and knowing what each signal. So here's one that has just broken out. Let's get rid of that line. So that breakout told us now we've got a good prospect of a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. All right, so on the bearish side, same thing as we see an evening star signal, a bearish left-right combo. This is on Chewy. Now you've got at least this target or this target. So do you want to be 100% long or 100% short? You still want to offset your risk a little bit by if you think the market is going up, and you've got 10 positions on, maybe you have eight long and two short. So there's still, you can see what happened to SPWR. Bearish, a little bit of uh, uneasiness there. Bearish uh, doji, and then a bearish left-right combo closing below the T-line. What's that tell you immediately, or what should that tell you immediately about the bullish strength of this. It's not there anymore. You should be uh, out or off to something else. There's your gap up in the overbought condition. And there's your bearish harami. So if you see a gap up in the overbought area, what's your first thing you should be thinking? Well, if you were like me back in the good old days, there wasn't any good old days. I was a terrible investor. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get rich. This is going to go through the roof. And then there's a bearish harami. I'm thinking, ah oh, man, it's still on this. I want this to go up instead of saying bearish harami tells me the buying has stopped. I should be closing it out. We're definitely closing it out here. Now I can think about going short because what happened to our statistical probability when it closed below the T line? It told us the probabilities are pretty great after a bearish signal confirmed with great enthusiasm, meaning the gap down, it's time to go short. That's not what I want. Fubo. Very simple logic. Look how far away you are from the T-line. Where should your safety stop be? At least back here at the open, because if it comes down through there, what indications do we have that it's time to be out of this trade? Number one, look how far away we are from the T-line. And two, if it comes down through there, who's in control, the bulls or the bears? The bears. And where do you think the next area is going to be to test the T-line? If you are in an overbought area and see a sell signal, do you still wait for a close below the T-line? Uh, no, not necessarily. If I'm way far away from the T-line and I see a sell signal, I'm going to start taking profits, even if it's only half a position. Which was the one that I just did? If I had been long here, 
And then it did this, I would have closed out probably at least half the position, if not the full position. Because how many pieces of evidence do I have that this is a likely good, likely a good place to sell? One, they're gapping it up in the overbought area. Two, we've moved a good distance away from the T-line. And three, the next day they do a sell signal, even though we're not anywhere near the T-line, if I have a sell signal, where do you think they're likely to move it? Back down here. So the T-line is just a good confirming indicator. It works both ways. It tells you when to stay long, and then it gives you a, a little bit better view of when to start taking profits. So obviously, a sell signal in the overbought area is time to start looking to, to uh, 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 start looking to take. I, now I forgot what I was saying because I was reading what Bert was saying. Um, Oh, uh, I'm trying to get back to, this is just great. I got to quit drinking this late at night. But if I see things that are starting to give me warnings that I should be taking profits, I'm going to start taking profits a little bit faster. <laughs> Sorry, Bert. I, was, I used to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Would you have closed at the end of the day? Probably. Or at least I would have closed half. More than likely, I would have closed the position because of the fact you were that far away from the T-line, number one. Number two, that they gapped up the previous day, which was our warning. And three, that our next target, if they opened it lower, was heading down here. I was in a high-risk area at this point, and I saw a sell signal. That's right. Strong eggnog. Trade desk. Very signal. Not a sell signal, but a close below the T-line. The next day they brought it back up. So that's what I would have done. I would have said, all right, Uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. I've got a sell signal, but it closed below the T-line, but it was, I'm sorry, I don't have a sell signal, and it closed below the T-line. So what should be my uh, trading strategy? It better open positive and trade positive. Well, it did a doji right here. Now what's my next trade strategy? I better put a sell stop someplace that if this moves up, I'm fine. If it comes back down through that level, I want to be out of this trade. Where would you put a softy uh, stop? Well, I figure there's probably going to be a little bit of consolidation tomorrow. Tomorrow the T-line should be up here somewhere. So I'll probably still use the T-line as the uh, safety stop. Trade desk. It can still, well, yeah, that's a toughie. How many, shoot, that was down, what, 15% today? You could short it, but then you'd watch to see what happens here. Then you watch to see what happens here filling this gap. Things like Vetco. Another case where putting a safety stop right here, I'm just kind of flipped over to when you should have been out. Um, that the safety stops are what will save your life. Uh, I, for some reason, have it on log with make versus arithmetic. I don't know why. But uh, I don't know if any is better than the other. Remember, wh whatever you have it set at, it's still this information right here that's important. 
for example, ADSK, even though it is two bearish candle pattern back to back, better wait to start to short position. Uh, yes, but if I was going to short this, where was my my uh, signal, that, or where's my spot that tells me the probabilities of it being long goes against us? Just below the T-line. So this, if this opened lower, you've got a bearish signal, a bearish signal, a bearish signal, stochastics up here. If they start selling it off, that's when... Uh, yeah, it doesn't, uh, that's when I'd start uh, shorting. Who was asking? MC. Uh, Bert, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And I say it doesn't matter. Just flip back and forth and see which one you like the best. Remember, this is the important criteria, not, not how they have it numbered along the side. And net... Bearish close below the T-line. If I was long, they'd have to bring it back up above the T-line and trade positive, which they did on Thursday. But then I now have my safety stop back below the T-line because it shouldn't come back in that direction. Yeah, so use whatever you're comfortable with. That's why I don't even know what I've got on here, whether it's on these charts. It's probably arithmetic, right? Yeah, because they're even numbers. Whereas on TCNet, I might have it logarithmic so I can see what the percentage moves are. That's your eyeball halfway points. Uh, there you go. Okay, thanks, Jay. That's a good. On um, this one, yes, they're arithmetic. Arithmetic. Oh, Ooh. somebody wanted me to repeat what Sandy had made me for Christmas breakfast. All right. She made me eggs Benedict with the nice sauce. But she served it to me in a nice shiny hubcap. So when I asked her, why did you serve me egg Benedict in a hubcap? She said, because... Uh, for, for the, uh, how would she say it? It's best for the, it's always best for the plate of chrome for the holland, holland days. No place like, uh, no plate like Chrome for the holidays. So. Yeah, no plate like Chrome for the holidays. Uh, that's why that was getting better. Okay. All right, so the markets, uh, Okay. Oh, check the oils. All right. Let's see what crude oil was doing. Wait. C O A F Q one. I'm wrong here. F dot T L. 
Okay, so crude oil is at 47.62. Apache, once they've closed, look at your big left-right combo, and then the close below the T-line. That was time to close out some of these uh, oils. Same scenario over here on Occidental. Exxon Mobil would not be long or short. And Chevron would not be long or short. So there's nothing. Uh, these are, this is the February, yeah, that was the February contract. Now, Bill, except mine isn't fully restored. Mine's actually all original. It was the 14th Thunderbird ever built, we think. Well, yeah, my T-Bird has the hubcaps for the center and then the wheel, spindle wheel cover for the outside. Yeah, doji sandwich on that one. So let's, uh, yeah, that was my first car that I bought out of college. The summer I graduated, I hitchhiked up to Ticonderoga, New York, because I knew the 55 T-Bird up there was for sale, and did some hard negotiations. I said, how much do you want for it? He says, 3500 And I said, will you take any less? He said, nope. And I said, okay. So I bought it. Uh, no, Yelp. Uh, uh, Bill, surprisingly, I can fit into my T-Bird a lot better than I can fit into some of my other cars. No, it take back up. Um, Yelp, no, that's not too late to get in. That's actually the signal. I'd start thinking about buying this one on positive trading. Okay. There's about... Here's the five that I'll probably narrow down. Either TRIP, T-R-I-P-E, GILT with the kicker signal bobble breakout, Las Vegas Sands with the uh, doji gap up, best friend. If it breaks out through here, it's got a lot of running room. And Let's see, I got one next to DPW. DPW is a, a good one to go after. And did I do Yelp? I guess I did. Trip, Las Vegas Sands, Guilt, DPW, and Yelp. All right, so probably going to see some of those on the recommended list. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, CCJ backed off, so that wouldn't be on my recommended list. Probably wouldn't go back after this until it comes up through this level. And then BTBT now becomes a different trade in that it's probably now a 45 degree. The EAF was a good looking chart also. So I'm just looking at the percentage move. So there's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that one either. Okay, so are there any general questions on candlesticks? How do you scan for charts you're looking at when so many have stochastics in the middle? Uh, because we know there is no uh, 
that the market looks like this, meaning we're not in an oversold condition of the market, we're still in a trend. My scans do not look for stocks that are in the oversold condition. Because if we've been in a steady uptrend, albeit very slow in the uh, in the Dow, if something's in the oversold condition in this market environment, that means there's probably something wrong with it. But there's they've been selling it. So I just do a very simple scan. I'm I'm looking for the stocks that have had the biggest percent price move today. And the, those are the ones that are going to give me things that look like uh, like this percentage move. So I can scan for the biggest percent move, start from the top of the list. Now, I can't let's see if I can do this real quick. Oh, uh, let's see if I can find something. Nah. Well, something like this. Everybody was, uh, I guess people in the uh, chat room were trading this one today. Here's another one, ACY, that just skyrocketed. It went from here, with about the $2 range, to 38 today. But something like that, if I was scanning, I'd say, oh, that's probably already moved without me. And there'll be a lot of times where you see them open here and then trade something trading up here because of something. Well, it's already gone past us. What we're looking for are the ones that have patterns. Oops. Something, something that looked like this would now go onto my watch list. So, uh, Cooley, the, uh, um, so the fact that they're not in the oversold area doesn't matter because a lot of stocks are in an uptrend. I'm looking for the ones that are showing new buy my patterns. Are the good candlestick patterns to use for credit spreads, reversals, breakouts work better? Uh, Stephen, we do an option training session to say, all right, if we've got a a uh, uh, if we've got a fry pan bottom breakout, what should be the best trade for that? Well, that might be a combination of buying calls outright and then maybe doing a very far out of the money spread because if it does move that little bit of money that you have in the spread may ha make a big percentage prop profit. If it's something that looks like a 45 degree, that may be just a, uh, a spread or a credit spread. And so those are the type of things we kind of analyze. Uh, and I don't use a whole lot of sophisticated option strategies. They're either buying calls or puts or buying a call spread or selling a call spread or buying a put spread or selling a put spread. You've got a lot of option strategies like the uh, what is it? iron condor or the, uh, the butterfly. I don't have time to sit there all night and try to figure out what the best strategy is on all those things. I want to be able to find the best strategy in a matter of minutes and put it into action without spending 45 minutes trying to figure out how to do it. Facebook formed a best friend today? Not really. A best friend is a gap up. And so if you were looking at this chart, which direction do you think this trend is going? Pretty much nowhere. So that means I wouldn't even be looking at this one. Uh, the signal is more important. 
You've got a bearish left-right combo, which tells me if they open this positive or lower tomorrow, I'd close out the position if I was long if I didn't close it out today. Even though it's above the T-line, this is a very power powerful sell signal. I can always see what it does once it gets back to the T-line. Now OCGN is just kind of a, yeah, that's, uh, now you can see where it opened today. It opened well above the previous day's open. I would suspect a 45 degree at least, but when, on these big breakout, it's not unusual to see them take another big, whoops, big up move. Uh, which one was it? SLDB. They do this and then bam, they take it up another, because this told you there was some new great strength uh, coming into it. Amazon appears to be breaking out, yes. Mostly through this little level right here. So something strong is happening there, obviously. Microsoft, yeah, Apple was moving LL. Microsoft is moving better than it has in a long time. Um, Usually Microsoft is just kind of junky to trade, but it's it's now picking up a little bit of consistency. Uh, let's do this. Jim, go ahead and do the double line, but try to have a question with your request to see what it's doing. Uh, Palo Alto, I would suspect it, it's coming. So if this opened lower tomorrow and I was long, I'd close it out because you're seeing that it's starting to turn over, the probabilities are starting to go against you. Jim, do the next double line. Pattern, greater than signal, greater than T-line. They all kind of work in combination. It's not that, it's, and it's not like you had to look at them at each with a different feature. You can look at something instantly. Yep, they're starting to sell this, and you're above the T-line. It's probably time to get out. First solar. That's not. First solar. Getting a little bit soggy. Another one that if I was long and it opened lower, I'd probably close it out and find something better. Flex. Another one that had a hanging man in the overbought area. If this opens lower, I'd probably go find something with better prospects to it. J.P. Morgan. The uh, the biggies or the big financials are moving positive, which is a good positive indication for the market in general. But as long as these stocks, Goldman moving stronger, Tells you the market's not going to sell off. Yes, if they're starting to come into the big ones again, um, that means investor confidence is still still around. Uh oh. Bert, 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 Bert. Fov. All you can do right now is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line because of the fry pan bottom trajectory. And CYCC, once they break out, look at your slow curve breakout. So at this point, have a safety stop somewhere where it shouldn't trade, like back below this area, but stay long until you see a sell signal. United. Nothing. Would not be long or short. Can't see which, uh, who's in control here. CSIQ, another one with a bearish left-right combo. If it opened lower, you close it out. It's coming back to test the T-line. Now, when it's coming back to test the T-line, all it is is a test of the T-line. We don't know whether it's going to hold or bounce back up, so why take the risk? You've got a bearish left-right combo, which is a 
a sell signal and a powerful sell signal, you want to be out if it, they open that lower. This one should have been closed out today with it closing below the T-line. Now, when you close something below the T-line, close it out. What's the worst case scenario? It turns around in a couple of days and heads back up. You can always buy it back. But as long as it closed here, the probability factor has now gone dramatically against you. In FedEx, stay short. Ever since this little gap down, you had the bearish engulfing, your bearish left-right combo, and a bearish gap down. Stay short. You're in the oversold area, but you haven't seen any buy signals. You just stay short. Egan. Uh, no, it's not dead. You're still in the fry pan bottom type trajectory, and you're still above the T-line. So I'd stay with it, but I have a safety stop below the T-line. Louisiana Pacific. That one told you you should be out of it. Uh, yes, you can short this one. You can see how it's not going anywhere. Now with a bearish left-right combo, first target, second target, kind of in back at that support level. American. Nothing great there, but it, was American the one that announced that they're going to be supplying the uh, Boeing planes that have been shut down for a couple of years? I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. Sunworks move too slow. Not really. You got a fry pan bottom. If it moves from five and a five forty to seven, that's a significant percentage return. I wouldn't be uh, afraid of that. Uh, I can't get that up here, Harry. For some reason, it doesn't come up on the, these systems. However, I was listening to one of the news commentators saying that a friend of his son's, his son's friend, bought Bitcoin when it was just starting, and now... At a very young age, he could pretty much retire. And I've got, uh, I know a kid that I used to have work around the, the, in the barn and in the yard for me, also owned Bitcoin. He isn't, wasn't very old. I think he just graduated from college a couple of years ago. And he's made quite a few hundred thousand dollars on his Bitcoin position. So. Somehow I wasn't smart enough. Fry pan bottom breakout to stay long. Uh, wait or buy on. I would, uh, yeah, I'd buy on positive trading. Then I'd probably use this halfway point as my stop because if it came back down through there. Telling you they didn't break out. AIKI. Uh, nothing wildly exciting. You could go long on this one or stay long. Baba, I think the Chinese government said they were going after Baba for some reason. So if you're short, you stay short. Uh, Neri, I would just stay long. I'd have a safety stop right at the day's open. I think we did flex, didn't we? 
Lex, no, I'd be ready to uh, close this out on weakness tomorrow. SPI. Nothing great yet, but if they do open this positive, you could be buying. There's a little gap right here, but I wouldn't be afraid to buy this one on positive trading. The golds are having trouble. Uh, JJ, I would probably be coming out of the uh, uh, the golds. They've they've lost steam and ECAF. This is the uh, January contract, kind of flat right now. AHT probably wouldn't be long or short. Uh, a little kicker signal, yes. So if you're buying it, you can see you've got a wedge. It needs to break out through the top of that wedge. So if you're buying it, just watch to see what happens at that uh, resistance level. EPAM. Ooh. I'd have a safety stop down here or maybe at least uh, right now just put the safety stop at the uh, the T line which will be more up in this area tomorrow. And TSEM there's your there there's your uh, uh, good strong chart bullish engulfing doji sandwich wave one wave two wave three bouncing off the 34 e oh I don't know whether oh from yeah let's say 18 to 27. What is that? Nine points. Nine points from there would take you up into the, uh, say, about the $34, $35 area. Burpe. That one. Shoot, there was a big spike. If you're buying on this one, use today's open as your stop. DQ, nothing there to get real excited about. Um, yeah, just nothing there. If you happen to be long, it better come back up through to, to today's open tomorrow. If it opens lower, I'd close it out. And would probably even be more apt to start looking to go short on it. S fix, that's a good short. Oh, you already said that. Ralph, I never read far enough. And there's another good short on Etsy. Fire eye has to open positive. I put a safety stop at this level. Might even put a safety stop right here. But if they open this and come down through that level, that's telling you the sellers are still in control. And GameStop is holding up. It's staying above the 3T line, so I'd suspect you're in a 45 degree. Blink. Yeah, still have to see whether it's staying above the 3T line. So this one you want to see open positive and trade positive tomorrow. And apps, get ready to short this on weakness. Bearish left-right combo closing right at the T-line. If it opens lower, definitely go short. And then use the T-line as your stop. Bearish uh, evening star signal on ARWR, another one that you could go short. Excel, uh, that's not good. 
looks like it's closing about the halfway point of this candle. If I was long, it has to open positive. If it opens lower, it's coming back down here, and you don't know what it's going to do from that point. If it doesn't open positive, close out. Up to your head of me, CR, yes. Also, in today's doji on Apple, an indication of strong bullish sentiment on Apple. That's not, am I looking at the right thing? I'm not seeing a doji on Apple. The fact that it's kind of gapped up, yeah, it's not telling you anything other than we're still in a good, strong uptrend. And Jenko, this one with the Evening Star, and notice what happened on day three of the Evening Star. They gapped it down. That's a lot of force. Pretty much telling you they're not going through this level. Close below the T-line. Still long. Yeah, I would have I would have closed it out. I would have closed it out with an opening positive after an evening star signal. I would have put a safety stop at where it closed because logic says if it came back down through there, it's still confirming this sell signal. Edit. Stay long, but put a safety stop right here. It needs to go this way, not this way. Ballard, bearish left-right combo, yes. So if you were long, even though this closed above the T-line, I would have probably closed this one out. You're in the overbought area. you got a bearish left-right combo. It's telling you there's probably better places to go find uh, to put your money. Yeah, was that the 737? Okay, a fry pan bottom on Alaska. Southwest not going anywhere. Insufficient kickback there. And I think we did S-fix, right? S-fix, yes, you can go short. You said gold is in trouble. Oh, let's see. F dot CP. Not really. Still above the T-line. Might not be real enthusiastic. It's just not selling off. It's not going up, but it's not selling off. Dust. Oh, no, there's nothing here on dust that would tell me there's anything wildly exciting. And silver? Well, silver's still acting well. Yeah, still a January contract, still in an uptrend. Nikola was up today because I think somebody came out and said they were probably a $30 stock. Now, it's not a reversal signal. So it probably would be something I wouldn't play with. Uh, just because, yeah, it's not a signal. There's better places. And Matador, nothing. There's nothing there right now. FISB, that one you can get ready to buy. It looks like a little scoop pattern. Wouldn't be buying this one if it trades up above today's open. You can see how it opened and traded down. If they open it and take it back up, your scoop pattern might be in place. Okay, thank you, Neil. Overstock, that kind of... got dismal right here at the 50. I just watch if you're short to see what it does 
once it gets down to the 200-day uh, moving average and see what it does from there. Oh, Pashaw. H-Z-N-P. Uh, I wouldn't go long yet. Even though it's at the bottom of the trend channel, it's not showing anything real strong. I'd, I'd want to see something strong to break it out. So if you are going long, eh, you just have to get through all this area. The Apple, I don't know, what's Apple doing after hours? I don't pay attention to any charts after hours because it's uh, yeah, it's not the reflection of everybody buying and selling. Yeah, the general market is still in a slow uptrend. I don't know, did Tesla... Yeah, Tesla is still in a slow uptrend. And is crude oil up? CLAF21. That's apparently not the right contract. CLAG21. This is the February contract. It's up 28 cents. And QS, uh, I'd have a safety stop somewhere. But if this started trading lower, I'd probably take some profits and then wait to see what it does if it comes back down to the T-line. Shopify with the close of the bearish left-right combo, that wasn't quite a sell signal, but this was the sell signal confirming. Uh, Coca-Cola, I thought, came out with good earnings. It's not usually a very active trader but I think it had some good movement today. So it wouldn't be anything that would trade, but the only reason is because it moves so slow, but it's heading in this direction, which makes it a viable, uh, maybe a option spread. And car gurus, gap up doji, doji, hanging man, bearish engulfing, that's telling you it's time to be out of this. Uh, I wouldn't go short unless they start bringing it back down through the T-line. Again, that would improve your bearish probabilities. And this one probably is now likely to come back up and test that high level. Okay, so if we see this market open positive tomorrow, if they break out through this level, that means we've got another potential wave to the upside. Yeah, I think Costco said that their earnings were up 10%, or their traffic was, or something. So you could be buying this one. Obviously, you have to watch to see that it can get through the 50. All right, everybody. The futures are up. All right. That's right. No plate like Chrome for the Hollandaise. So with that, we'll see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. See you then.